Hey guys, it's me. Another episode of Insights with Latrice. I am so glad you are here. You're with me. We're hanging out this evening. This is so lovely. I'm always looking forward to my Tuesdays and Thursdays with you guys so we can just talk real good about real life and about you and I. So I'm glad you're here. But let me tell you this. This is going to be another like epic episode, right? So you want to tell your family, your friends, go ahead and like this um, Facebook Live as well as share it. Um, Do a watch party if you need to, because we're going to talk about relationships today. And listen, these relationships have been a little challenge in this COVID-19 situation. So we want to get information. We want to get tools to help us navigate, just like all the other episodes are helping us navigate through mental health, through organization and all those different things that I've brought um, your way. But today we need to talk about it and we need to be candid and we need to be real. But again, let's do some business work first. Make sure you're following me. I'm on social media platforms, Instagram, Facebook, of course, and Twitter. And let's say you are driving and you just want to hear something real good. Go ahead and follow me on Spotify, Google and Apple for my podcast. So without further ado, let's talk about it. Today, you saw my graphics on um, relationship, relationships and COVID-19. Um, unfortunately, um, domestic abuse has gone to an all-time high because of um, what's happening in the world right now. Also, um, um, divorce. You know, people are still finding a way to get a divorce or filing the paper. So that's like totally um, something that we got to deal with. Well, my guest today, so all my guests are like amazing and awesome to me, but this guest is a little more special than everyone else. Let me tell you why. Um, he's a father, dad, husband, protector, provider, and Aside from all of that, he's just a good person, just just an awesome man that I've had the pleasure of knowing for quite some time and who I, I am actually married to. So my guest today is none other than my husband, my husband, Olivier Kabuya. Hello, sir. Well, hello, ma'am. I'm so glad to be here. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're a part of this. I couldn't yes. wait until I had an episode with you, and I wanted it to be the right time. And I know you like me to be out there, but I love oh, when we... that. Was quite an intro there. <laughs> that was quite an intro. Was I'm that like, okay? Uh, that that's uh, like that's going to be tough to live up to now. No, because it's just who you are. <clears throat> That's the beauty of it. I'm not making anything up or, you know, puffing you up. It's just simply who you are. And that's what's such a blessing. And that's why I couldn't wait to get you on my show so people can know who you are. You know, people ask, who's Latrice's husband? And you even made the comment that I'm Latrice's husband. I don't have a name. <laughs> yes, I don't have a name. I'm, uh, wherever we go, I'm known as Latrice's husband. Oh, you are Latrice's husband. Yeah, <laughs> I do have a name, ladies and gentlemen. I do have a name. <laughs> hey, Daphne, I see Daphne's joined us. Well, here's the thing. What people don't realize is that you do everything you and um the girls behind the um, behind the scene especially leia you guys no, hold on hold on let me so why 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 am i in a different place than you right now i'm well, trying to I'm, understand i'm gonna explain that i'm gonna explain that oh, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna explain that. We're we're gonna share it with the audience. We you are. see the, the 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 effect of COVID nineteen. <laughs> no, so here's the thing: we aren't social distancing. Hey, yeah, Jeff. social distance. We are actually practicing, ladies and gentlemen, social distance right now. 
So we're she's right in a location here. and I'm in a different yeah. location yeah, because, because we you're... are being safe and practicing social distance. You're this in is how you keep a heart. relationship. Huh? No, <laughs> it is not. I'm in Kansas City, Missouri. You're in Overland Park right now. So and that's more than six feet apart, girl. That it is, and I can't wait till you get home. But let's let's talk about it. Let's talk about relationships. Let's talk about <clears throat> everything regarding that and COVID nineteen. First of all, let's let's do this. Oh. Yeah. Hey, Sharon. That's my mentor. Oh, my gosh. Oh. So, um, I'm yeah, sorry. your mentor is good. You're going to get in trouble with your mentor. <laughs> no, but he, OK, so here's the deal. Olivia, relationships. Yes. <clears throat> They're amazing. Marriage is awesome. Right. But um. During COVID-19, I've noticed, and I've been reading a lot, divorces have um, gone up, domestic violence. Mm -hmm. Why do you think this is happening? You know, uh, I'm, it's, it's interesting. Uh, literally this afternoon, probably I would say within the last, it was probably an hour and a half ago, I ran into somebody I uh, uh, actually know. And, uh, and while we work, we haven't seen each other in, in quite a while. And as we kind of touching back basis, uh, the person proceeded to tell me that they actually separated from, you know, their significant other. And they had been together for five years. Uh, but here's uh, what, what I believe <clears throat> is that COVID-19, uh, by bringing people uh, closer together and pretty much putting them in the same room, same house or whatever, all it did was to amplify what was already there. Mm -hmm. okay. So it's not that some issue that COVID-19 is the cause of, of, you know, of this. No, those issues were there. It just got amplified by the fact that you were forced to be together and or whatever, whatever anger management the person is going through. Okay. Um, or whatever other issues that can cause the breakup, the the dissolution of the marriage, the union, uh, those issues were already existing before COVID nineteen. It's just okay. that you the it was not amplified. So that's that's what I believe. Wow. Okay. Well, we're gonna add to that, but I wanted to say hello, greetings to Loretta Bertrand, of course, Sharon again. <laughs> Um, oh, Bertrand, that's my Bertrand, that's my cousin. Okay, so um, okay, so let's get into it. Let's talk about it some more about these relationships in marriage, especially. What is one misconception? Because we've been married almost eighteen years. Mm -hmm. What is one misconception that you had prior to us getting married? And I'll tell you mine. Go ahead. That you were going to be perfect. I am. <laughs> no, let me tell you why. You still have me... not realized that. <laughs> well, I, God is still working on me. Let's talk. Oh. Let's let's just um, <laughs> talk it up to that. Here, and when I say perfect, because you have amazing qualities. You're just a genuine. Like if we weren't married, like we were prior to us being together, we were friends. You're mm -hmm. just that dude, right? And for some reason in my mind, I had preconceived notion that this is what you have to do because you do this, which is very unfair. So because you're a man of God, because you're you're a man of integrity and because you know you're you're just an awesome leader in our home, in our community, I just didn't understand how someone could miss the laundry basket. <laughs> <laughs> You're just going to put it all out there. <laughs> no, real talk. So this no. is therapy for you. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, maybe we should bring Karen in. <laughs> yeah. To the conversation. So, so, I, so <clears throat> I just thought because you had all these, diff these qualities that were amazing, surely those other, you know, the other things that surface, I was like, wait a minute, how is this happening? And that was such an unfair pressure to mm -hmm. put on you. 
um, it, put, it, it puts you, I think, in a cage or a bondage that I had no right to do. <clears throat> yeah. That was my misconception. What about you? Well, that I wasn't yeah. perfect and you realized I was perfect. Boom, done. Yes. <laughs> Well, uh, I would say the misconception. The, uh, one of the misconception. I, see, I don't. Here's the thing. I don't believe I had that many misconceptions. Okay. Uh, I think one of the misconception probably I would say that uh, that I had was probably thinking that um, I that it wouldn't be as hard to work through differences. Okay. And, and let me explain what I mean by that. Uh, I think I thought that just because you love somebody and that person loves you, uh, you can overlook those things that can uh, irritate you. And, uh, and, uh, and that love just will be just, it's just love every day. We wake up and it's just about love. <laughs> just, we just love each other. Yeah. There's nothing else that could, you know, um, that could come and step in between or whatever. Um, and I, I think that was probably one of the misconceptions. And just to realize that, no, this thing called marriage, you've got to, um, you've got to work on it. it it's, it's W or okay, my pastor says all the time, you know, how marriage is work and it's not for the, the faith of heart. Uh, but, uh, I do, I do believe that, uh, now I do believe in commitment. I do believe that commitment, uh, when two people are committed, they can overcome, uh, whatever obstacles, uh, but it does take time and it does take work. And, uh, a lot of the misconceptions sometimes that we bring into a marriage or a union, um, a lot of it uh, also based on how we were raised. Uh, and also not only on why we were raised, but the fantasies that we, we dreamed of as being a young girl or a young boy and, and then what you've seen. And, and, and so you paint a picture of what this is how it's going to be, you know. Uh, and, uh, and, and it affects you when, if you enter into a relationship and you don't realize that, hey, the, the things are not, it's not a fantasy. This is real world with real people. Right. And you try to bring two people coming from two different backgrounds, two different history, family culture, et cetera. Or in our case, not just family culture, uh, but we're talking about just upbringing and, you know, I'm coming from Africa, you from the United States, totally different background, yeah. ethnicity, and so forth, and try to bring those two people together. So there's several layers uh, that sometimes when you just over look at relationship, you don't think about. Exactly. And so, but before <clears throat> I, do, I want to add to this, so people are pro probably wondering why we're not together. So one thing about this whole COVID situation, because you're an essential worker, you're working nonstop. You're working six to seven days a week. So we don't get the luxury of being under each other 24 seven. Mm -hmm. But what's interesting. So is, like that, is that a good thing? Is that something that has, well, let, let me flip this. Now I'm asking the question. Is this something that has helped you in your marriage? <laughs> How is the guest controlling the narrative? Here's the thing, Olivier. Let's be yeah. honest. Let's talk yeah. about it. We've always, in the past, we've worked together about three times, different mm -hmm. companies, and we loved it. We mm -hmm. like being around each other. Yeah. Like Actually, that's true, true talk. I'm always like, this is my dude, like for yeah. real, for real. Yeah. So let's let's hit it again. Olivier, <clears throat> why is it so hard for men to be vulnerable? Mm -hmm. Boom. 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 Well, so I'll tell you, uh, one, because we are not raised to be. Okay. okay. Uh, uh, we are not raised to be. We are raised to... Typically, okay. Uh, typically, men are raised to, um, if you, uh, uh, you know, typically when a young boy uh, fall off his bike, uh, you know, it's like, hey, get up, stop crying, you know, hold yeah. it together, come on, be strength. It, so we are always called and raised to demonstrate strength. 
um, and, and, and holding your emotion and being in control of your emotions. Uh, and, and, and that is something that typically young boys are raised to be. And so we do not, um, it, you, you think most boys, when they, they even cry for something, why are you crying? Man, tough yeah. it up. You know, tough Stop it crying. up. You don't need to, to cry. Stop crying and so forth. Yeah. Well, the young girl is like, come here. Yeah, I understand. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about your feelings. Well, the young men, we are not taught. We are not raised to talk about our feelings. And mm-hmm. so that carries over in your adulthood where you talk about being vulnerable. Being vulnerable is almost seen as a sign of weakness. Wow. Okay? So for me to be vulnerable, then that means I have to display weakness, but I'm not raised to be weak. I'm raised to display strength. And so it is, it is wow. not easy um, for uh, men, especially men who were raised by authoritarian dad or, or you know, uh, or who had a strong, strong authoritarian father figure for them to truly display emotions or even be vulnerable for that matter. So, what would you tell that man in this relationship mm. who, <clears throat> who just doesn't know how to be vulnerable? Or let's let's flip it because I think a woman plays a role in that. Yes. Because the first time a man decides to be vulnerable, if we don't respond in a way that is a safety net, say that that husband is like done. It's done. I'm, it's I'm, over. You know, yeah, but I mean, I'll say this in my experience. Uh, yes, it, 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 um, it took us a while for me yeah. to actually become vulnerable because when uh, the the in, uh, at the beginning when I even attempted to be vulnerable, uh, the backlash that came from yeah. Miss Latrice was. Let's talk about it. That but here's the thing. Nice, but Let's talk. But I didn't yeah. recognize your vulnerability because yes. in my mind. I'm like, what? And so the way I grew up, we just blah, 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 you know? And once, that's why it's so important, I think, in seeking God, in having mentors to help you navigate through marriage. Because once I understood, oh my gosh, my husband is being vulnerable, it took me to a whole nother level, but it took maturity. Yeah. Yeah. It it, it does. Uh, But what you are, your question was, what would I say to, to, to the man, um, yeah. you know, hey, who are uh, trying? First of all, the thing I discovered personally is that there is strength in being vulnerable. Uh, because sometimes the, the, the moment you are vulnerable to somebody, um, and, and probably I'll say for the man, maybe start by being vulnerable to another man. Okay. Uh, Okay. And and I'll say, yeah, just start by being vulnerable to another man. Because you see, here's the thing about being vulnerable about men. It's not just that we're not vulnerable to our spouses, but even to other men, we have a hard time of being vulnerable to other men. Because what, you want me to show you that I'm I'm weak? No, I'm not going to show you that. You want me to show you that I'm vulnerable? No, I'm not going to show you that. And so I'll say, start by being vulnerable, even if, if you can't Make that steps with your your wife uh, uh, because you concerned about the way she's going to respond, or because you've tried and the way she responded. Try it by being vulnerable to another man. Uh, but there is there is strength in being vulnerable because here's the, the thing: sometimes those areas that we have to be vulnerable in are areas that we typically are not strong in. Uh, yeah. But there is strength. In, uh, in unity, there's strength in community. And by that, I mean somebody where this area is not an area that I'm strong in, uh, somebody else is. And that person can actually help me overcome or become stronger or help me know how to deal with whatever I'm, I'm dealing with. The, the thing is, and I think in the union, is that when you truly start being vulnerable to one another, yeah. You learn to truly trust each yeah. other, uh, and 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 with your most, you know, essential or um, secret things, you know, uh, and by by start revealing that to 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 your spouse, 
uh, it, it creates a bond between the two because now there's something that th there's a, there's a, something that you dealing with that your spouse knows about and that you know about her and you can truly help each other. Uh, the the now the dangerous thing for couple is this is that knowing that area of vulnerability of your spouse, but knowing that in the heat of a disagreement yes. that you are bringing that up. Yes. Now that takes maturity. That, that takes, ma takes maturity. maturity yes. Because it is so easy in that time of being, um, you know, you're going back and forth and you're, oh, yeah. okay, well, you know about what you said yeah. about this and you bring that yeah. up as a, yeah. you know, as a try to, to stab on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and, but yeah. it takes, it takes true maturity. And, and this yeah. is the thing about relationship. Relationship have to evolve. If, if mm -hmm. one's relationship, and I'm so glad that I can, I think, and you would agree, that I can say that our relationship today isn't what it was 18 years ago, you know? Uh, and now the good thing we can well, say is that it's evolving. Well, I've been perfect the whole 18 years. You You're just have, in revelation. You, you, have, okay. been, you right. have been perfect. Thank you. You Thank know, you. you have been perfect. And, and this is now, this is something I learned. I will not disagree, ma'am. You have been perfect. <laughs> you have been perfect. But it has, it definitely has evolved. Um, I've matured, you've matured. But I think what's so important important is that commitment. And that's one thing you taught me is when you have two committed people, you can make it through anything. Yes. You know, yeah. <clears throat> When you say, you know what, this is until Jesus comes, we're in it. And so we got to figure this thing out. And but, because but, we want to be happy, we've had to do that. Mm -hmm. And we want to enjoy each other and, jo and enjoy the fruit of being married. So Absolutely. we've learned. Right. Out, yeah. And so, you know, this show goes fast. I have like three more questions that I want to throw at you real quick. So let's do it quick. Can we do that? We can try. Okay. Um, what do you think is the ingredient for uh, ingredients for a successful marriage? And hey, guys, everyone listening or watching, please, if you have a question, throw it at us. Go ahead. What is the ingredient for a perfect marriage? No, for six. No, not perfect. Oh. I only God's perfect, and then yeah. I think I might no, <clears throat> never mind. Um, a successful marriage. What what is that? Wow. What that is would a you good say? Question. Right. So that is a very good question. Um, some of the ingredients. So one, I will say, um, the, the number one ingredient, um, I will say, is having God in the midst. Mm -hmm. In the midst of that, it, 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 it's the knowing that. Both party want the will of God above it, above all. Yeah. Okay. Um, and and um, and that they literally put God in the center of everything that they do, uh, because I do remember having strong disagreements with you, uh, <laughs> and in the moment of those strong disagreement and strong conversations, yeah. Uh, uh, I do remember sometimes being like, well. And asking the question, okay, so what is God saying? And it's like it's squashed whatever we were. I mean, it's like, okay, all right. But that to me, that is the number one ingredient. Um, it's it's putting God in the midst of it. Okay. Uh, the 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 other thing I will say it's um, having a firm commitment. But that that commitment is based on. Uh, that before, hopefully prior to the two coming into um, into a union, understanding your core values. Mm -hmm. What are your core values? What you know, each party, and how are you bringing those core value? And what's what is the key important things for you and for her, and how you're going to bring them together? You know. Uh, and clearly understand what are those core values, because sometimes when you do not or you don't agree on those core values, then now it becomes really hard to know what you're going to stand on. 
Yeah. You know, that 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 uh, union is, is is really hard to understand what is gonna cause. And the the next the next thing I would say is this is that do not be afraid. Um do not be afraid of counseling. <clears throat> and uh, and by that um, it's before you get together, while you're together and, and further. Um you know, I love what um Oh my goodness! Uh, I just his name just skipped my mind, um, but he said to us that uh, you know, Asani, Asani, yes, mm-hmm. Asani Pettiford said to us that um, going to counseling or having counseling, we should look at it as when you take your vehicle to go go get it serviced, and you get an oil change every three thousand miles. Yeah, uh, you have to look at it that way. And yeah. uh, and I think uh, counseling and so forth has always had the bad bad connotation because yeah. we only look at it as a moment to go or to enter counseling when you have um, you know when something just happened and and you know the roof is on fire and then you call the you know nine one one but no you you have to be able to 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 take that so those I will say three things that I think are valuable I mean there's a lot more but uh, right. Uh, those are the three that comes in mind right now. And so okay, what we'll probably have to do is a continuation because I do have a question um, from a listener. But before I get into that, I won't ask the other two questions I have. The one thing we didn't talk about vision for a family, a husband and a oh, wife. Yeah. We didn't talk about sex. All I'm going to say about vision is you definitely need one. <laughs> and about sex, you definitely need it all the time in a marriage, all the time. Okay, that's a healthy. <laughs> that's healthy. But we'll get into that uh, next time. But here's the question I have: What advice? Uh oh. What advice would you give to singles that desire to date while being stuck in the house right now? You know, during COVID. Ooh. Man, that that's a tough one, uh, and I, I want to say it's a tough one because one, I'm not single, um, yeah. and um, uh, so it's it's a it's a tough one. Here's what I would say: um, d- don't look at at um, at this as a <clears throat> look at it as, a, as an opportunity to uh, because here's what I would say: is that for singles. Um, and, and I think that was a single uh, woman asking the question, uh-huh. right? Yeah. Um, and it's don't look at it as a as a way. Hey, I'm stuck here. I can get out and so forth. Uh, there's still relationship here in this day and age of social media. You can still build relationships. Now, granted, listen to me. I'm not saying go out there and just you know. Uh, go crazy online building relationship because you, you know there's there's a lot of fake people online okay who try to display that they are something that they're not so i would not necessarily advise that that's the best way to meet people uh but it could be uh a way to still you know connect with people uh what i would say is that hey um get with the people that you know you know for if you, you have friends girlfriend boy you know and so forth male friend um, use the technology that is available today to sometimes maybe uh, just get mingle online with people that you know, because and the reason why I keep saying people that you know, because it's a safe way to do it. Okay. Safe place because you actually, these are people, you know, you trust and use zoom or whatever, do some video conferencing uh, and uh, have them invite other people and get to maybe meet other people that way. Who knows? I mean, it may spark something in that yeah. way. But I would say also take this time to get to know yourself so that when these things kind of relax, okay, and we start getting back out there and so forth, um, you have had an opportunity to reassess yourself, reassess what's important to you uh, so that when you get back out there, um, you have had that quiet time that you may not have ever had to truly reassess what you want in a relationship and what you're looking for. And I think if I could just pick <clears throat> on that, because especially with this technology and this young you know, group, this youthful group, you can like tell your friend, um, mm-hmm. okay, I'm, I'm getting told to cut. Okay, so let me just say this. 
you can tell your friends, hey, you're in this group, you know, um, why don't you pull some people? I'll pull some people. Let's have a Zoom, you know, um, speed dating. I don't know. You can be creative. You know what I'm saying? You yep. can have fun with it. There's a, there's always a way. Um, yes, I definitely think find yourself, discover yourself. But if you've discovered yourself and you like, listen, I'm tired of discovering <laughs> myself. You, yeah, know? The point. you know, I think that you can. Um, friends are always a good um, ally, if you will. That's kind of when you were searching for me. <laughs> we it was through a friend and so yeah. i think you know you definitely can say oh you know sally you're in abc group and i know there's a couple of brothers in there that look that's fine and got their head on straight why don't we do a zoom meeting and i just happen to be on the call exactly. you know hey we're crafty and we're creative listen that's right so i I'm so sorry, sir. But here's the thing. I got to close the show. But what's going to be so wonderful about it is that means you're going to be coming home as soon as this ends. So I'm kind of well, tickled. I'm just going to be honest with you. Um, so if, if you could give one last insight. Well, first, before you give that insight, why don't you give them your information so they can follow <laughs> you? Um, you have a great... Um, vision in terms of just helping and empowering people born to be great because we're all born to be great but we have to tap into that we have to recognize it you know we all have a purpose to serve people but we have to tap into that so give that information to the people so whoever's not following you I don't know why they wouldn't but let, let's give, give because that I'm Latrice, I'm Latrice husband. So you can find me on all social uh, media platform at Latrice's husband. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, you can find me at OKABUYA. I repeat, that's at, at OKABUYA at Okabuya. And that's on all, uh, all social media platform. It's, uh, it's the same. Um, or you can go, um, you know, uh, on the, to my website, oliviercabuya.com, and you can find me there as well. Um, I love connecting with people. And so hit me up, uh, DM me, and, um, yeah, let's go. Listen, ladies, DM him. I'm cool with it, but listen, don't play oh, games. She, she reads. <laughs> don't. <laughs> Uh, let me go ahead and help y'all with that one. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. Um, one she last has thing. access to my DM. Oh, absolutely. We both have access to each other. Um, I was going to also even have you speak French, but we won't do that. We'll do it next time. <laughs> what is your last insight that you can give, whether you're in a relationship, wanting to be in a re relationship, maybe newly divorced, just whatever status what what is an insight that you can leave with the listening audience? Well, <clears throat> that's a loaded question. Um, and you got it, baby. <laughs> here's what I will say um, for um, anybody in a relationship is that to take this moment. And I do believe that it is a blessing moment um, that we've been given uh, okay. for most most people, uh, most of uh, people around the world, for that matter. Uh, they are not essential workers or anything of that nature. So the majority of the people are actually stuck um, at home, either by, their, by themselves if they're single or uh, with, their, uh, with their spouse. And so take this moment uh, to, to get to know one another even better. Take this moment to learn to appreciate the stillness of the moment uh, while yet rediscovering one another in, in relationship. And if you by yourself take this to try to rediscover yourself, even for that matter, uh, this uh, moment, it's not going to last forever, but, uh, but take advantage of it. I will say, and I would encourage everybody to take advantage of it. Uh, take advantage of it for even for some couples to maybe sit down if there's not a clear family vision or or take this moment to actually talk about it, discuss it uh, with one another, and, and write it down and put some, some actionable plans behind it. If 
you're single, write your own vision. Take this moment to literally reassess yourself, write your vision for your life, what you aspire to, what you, you want to be able to do. And, uh, and uh, I mean, it's a moment that, it's, that we, we can, it's not just for us to rest, but I do believe that there's a lot of action that can, that can uh, come from it as well. Wow, that's good. Usually I say, okay, thank you, bye, and then I give an insight, but I'm going to keep you on with me. I want to I, I want to keep Latrice's husband on here. And what I would end with with the insight is that um, I'm going to directly speak to relationships that um, first, something that your grandma said, look at your spouse and write down all the great qualities yep. of that spouse, right? Mm -hmm. And then write down maybe what's challenging. And I guarantee you, the good is going to outweigh the challenge. Then if you, I'll take it a step further. If you look at the challenge, I bet you're strong in those areas. Mm -hmm. So that's why you're a match. Right. And that's one thing I had to look at instead of attacking my spouse. I had to say, well, this is an area of vulnerability for him. So let me cover him in this and vice versa. And I know you have done an amazing job covering me, but it has taken work. It has taken communication. And we didn't even get really to that. It has taken um moving the distractions away and really focusing and being intentional. We have intentional date nights, um, mm -hmm. all those things. And so during this time, I would say just really, really discover each other again. Discover, take those time, take that time to just connect with that spouse on a whole nother level. You may have to rewrite or um, change the vision a little, you know, make some adjustments. This is the time to do just that. Um, embrace it, discover, connect, and express yourself completely. So, um, wait a minute. Someone just told Teresa just said, Yeah, you're a piece of work, Latrice. And you know what? I am. And God made him exactly for me. He knew who could handle Latrice. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Please pray for Olivier Shakaya Kabuya. Because Latrice is, 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 I'm a work in progress, but I thank God thank for, all for, for Olivier, um, his patience. I thank God for just our connection and our love. And I hope that other people see that, right? And um, I'm just enjoying doing life with you. You're the most important people, actually, that should see it. These are kids. And they think we're gross. Yeah, I know. <laughs> they are always like, get a room. You're yeah. gross. <laughs> so anyway, I'm, I'm going to have to go. I'm going to see you, Daddy, in a few minutes. But let, come and join me on Thursday, everybody. Um, we are going to really, let me just say this. I, I'm sorry. Uh, my young, Our youngest child is doing this right now, like she's throwing up in her hand. But anyway, um, Thursday is going to be dedicated to mothers. And so we really want you there. We want you to join in. We're going to talk about mothers. Mother, motherhood is so amazing. And you don't have to actually birth a child to be a mother. There's so many layers and types of motherhood. And so please join us. My guest will be Danny Boatwright. You guys may know her from Survivor. Um, <coughs> Guatemala, I think. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And so she's a good friend. We grew uh, up together. Yeah. And so um, she has generation, her mother and then her grandmother. But I watched them. Her grandmother has passed, but I watched this generation of motherhood. And, and there's something about that connection and, and passing it on to the next generation. That is so important. So you don't want to miss that on Thursday. Until next time, thank you guys for joining me. Thank you so much, Olivier Kabuya. I appreciate you. And remember the three reels, real life, real you. And you know we getting ready to talk real good. Until next time. See you later. Bye.